Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about what I feel is possibly the best guitar for under a thousand dollars, the Yamaha FG3. A while ago I reviewed the Yamaha FG830, a really amazing instrument, not just for the price, it sounds really good. But here's the thing, for about double the money, this guitar is a real step up in my opinion. I won't put the exact prices today because they're always changing. I'll put the links in the description below for you to check that out. But basically, this guitar is under $1,000. It's about double the price of the other one. And I feel like it's a lot more than double the guitar. If you buy something like a $3,000 guitar and then buy a $6,000 guitar, is that double the guitar? That's subjective, but in my opinion, not in the same way that this is. And that's why I'm featuring this today. This is a remarkable instrument for the price and just as, again, as an instrument in general. This guitar is all solid wood and it's really nice looking wood as well. Check this out. That top is flawless and I'm seeing a lot of tops on other brands that are a lot more money than this that are not that nice. And then the back and sides, mahogany, solid mahogany and really, really nice grain. Look at that. The quality here, it just shines off this guitar. And by the way, it's a kind of a semi-gloss finish. It's not a gloss finish. You get nice tuners on here. These are a vintage style open gear tuner and they feel very nice to use. The wood on the neck is very nice as well. It's not streaky ebony like some are using. So that's a black ebony. I don't know if they dye it or not. They may do. They may do, but it looks great. So I don't really care. Same with the bridge here. And this is also a wider nut width. So on this guitar, you've got a one and three quarter inch nut where the other guitar that I reviewed was a slightly narrower nut. So if you were shopping for a guitar under a thousand dollars, there's many reasons in my opinion why you would go for this. It also comes with a gig bag and better strings. These are Elixir. So I really think there's a lot here to justify the extra money. And what you get here, it just feels and sounds a real step up from the other guitar. It sounds and feels so much more professional, in my opinion. Now you might ask me, well, how does this compare to a Martin D18? I haven't done that comparison. Of course, the thing is with guitars, sometimes we want certain brands on the headstock. And, you know, Martin guitars do play really well. They sound great. So I can't compare this to that today. But I will tell you, this stands up to any guitar, really. I bet if you recorded this and a bunch of other guitars, no one would know which was which. It really is that good. It feels really nice. It sounds great. And I think it looks fantastic, too. This has the ARE treatment, which is their acoustic resonance enhancement technology. Basically, they're cooking the top to make it more resonant, to make it kind of aged. That's another upgrade that you wouldn't get on the FG830. There's also a very nice binding around the edges here and the fret markers. Is there anything about this guitar that I don't like? I feel like the action's slightly on the high side, but a lot of guitar makers do that on purpose. This guitar is really intended to be played for heavy strumming and bluegrass. So you want a bit more height on the saddle. I think it's better for them to send a guitar where the action is slightly high, and then you can sand that down to your liking, rather than it being too low and buzzing, and you either have to use shims, which I don't like to use, or buy a new saddle, which is pretty inexpensive, but you've got to go and get that saddle. It might be okay for you. So try it out first, or ask your dealer to set up the guitar for you. The other thing is it comes with a gig bag, which I also love because I like to take my guitars around. I don't like to store hard shell cases. But that gig bag did have a slight odor to it. 
like a chemical smell at first. And I don't know what that is. Maybe because the guitar is brand, brand new and that just needs time to air out. But something worth mentioning that maybe Yamaha could address in the future. But they're minor things. This guitar, I have to stop myself from saying for the money. You know, this guitar for the money is amazing. This guitar, just as a guitar, is amazing. Look, it's a solid wood guitar. It looks classic. This would last you the next, well, the rest of your life, probably. It's just fantastic. They also make this with the pickup system, which is also very good. It's uh, kind of like the Cole Clark system, in a way. But I still prefer the Cole Clark system, but the pickup system in these is very good. That's the X series. That'd be the FGX3. And then there's also the FG5 which is made in Japan. This is made in China. And there's an FS. There's a smaller body version as well, which I haven't played. I have played the Japanese version of this, and I really don't feel there's much difference. They do use bone, nut, and saddle, which you could put on here. I don't think you really need it. I really think they're basically the same guitar. And actually, there's a couple of things I don't like about the Japanese version. They have a wooden pick guard, which picks up scrapes on it very easily because it's got little ridges on it. And also it comes with a hard shell case, which you might prefer, but again, I like the gig bag. I don't own one of these and I don't own the other Yamaha either, but I still recommend them. If you're shopping for a guitar, the FG830 is definitely worth considering for anyone. But if you can make it up to the price of this guitar, then you should go for it because this could be your lifetime guitar, your professional guitar, and it will just have so many extra features and benefits for that money. I really believe it'll be worth it. And this solid wood should also open up over time as well. I think this would be a great investment. So I don't have one of these simply because I gig my Cole Clark at the moment. I have the Rain Song, which I use around the house and leave out all the time. And I have my Martin guitars that I'm a big fan of, as you know. So I don't have the need for something like this. But I still think this is the best guitar I've played under $1,000. And I would still recommend this to anybody that doesn't want to buy a Cole Clark or a rain song or a martin right if you're looking for a guitar like this of this construction for this price this is just an amazing instrument and if you can try one i urge you to do so and i'll put the links below to where you can buy one check them out and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't I really would really appreciate it. It really helps me out. And I'll be back soon with more guitar reviews and demos. So look out for those and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.